Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm 40 today. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you all for sharing because my heart rejoices with you guys. Justin, I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you, Grant Adams. And a lot of you all that I do know, Oren, some of you all that went, Dalton, Cassie, Hannah, all of you, all of you guys. We've been praying for you all and wanting God to just touch your life in a way that you'll never forget. I prayed for you all this weekend that God would show himself so real to you that you would walk out of there, with, with, there without a shadow of a doubt that he is Jehovah God and he is Yahweh, and he is worthy of praise. I would love to tell you that all of the rest of your walk with Christ is going to be like this. Exciting, wonderful, on fire, but we all know that just as well as there's mountaintops, there's valleys. We all know that, right? But the God that's on the mountain is the same God that's in the valley, and he'll be there for you no matter what. This morning I woke up, Today's my birthday, and I thought, you know, 40's not going to be too bad. 30 about killed me, but 40's going to be good. 40's going to be real good. And just think about this. Those of you all that know about when the, the children of Israel walked through the wilderness for 40 years, imagine them walking through the wilderness as long as I am old. That's a long time. No wonder they complain, complained. No wonder they got tired of eating manna. No wonder they got tired. No wonder. It's a long time. And so God allowed me to see that perspective of it. Jennifer Bell actually gave me a scripture Sunday morning, the very same thing about that. But anyway, got in the truck, started it up to warm it up to go to take the girls to school. And the enemy hit me with a two-by-four up the side of my head. And I'm going to become very transparent with you all tonight. Because worship is about looking on the inside. There's something that was revealed to me today that I am weak in. And by the blow of the enemy that I received today, I saw where my armor was weak. But in my prayer time, I've been praying, God, I want to be in your will so much, and I don't want you to remove your hand from me. So reveal to me in my life what is displeasing to you so that I can give that to you and we can move on. Well, when you pray that prayer, that's a very dangerous prayer to pray because you're going to have to look at yourself. You're going to have to look at things that maybe you don't like. And I saw something today that I don't like. But you know what? This is the thing. God loves me so much he's not going to leave me there. That he's going to allow this to get better. This scripture, actually I read it last week, and Scott and I had a discussion about it, and we just did not get it. Like, we just were so like, I don't get it. So we, we pondered on it two, three days, and then I thought, I'm going to text Brian and see what he knows about it. And I thought, no, I'll text Greg Ford. <laughs> I bug the snot out of him all the time. Anyway, so, the, so anyway, I asked him about this scripture, and, I, and he shared with me his insight, which I thought he was a very wise person, but little did I know he, was, he had a commentary on his phone. He was getting my answers from that. So anyway, <clears throat> so I'm going to get one of them commentaries on my phone. But anyway, this is out of Exodus 32. Now, automatically you go, oh, my gosh, it's the Old Testament. I really don't care about Old Testament. Well, let me tell you, God still speaks through the Old Testament. And what was going on was Moses. How many of you all know who Moses was? Okay, for those of you all that don't know who Moses was, Moses was the one that God appointed to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of slavery. He was the chosen one, okay? So Moses has led these people. He, he brought them out. There was, there was God performed many miracles in Egypt and got them out of the bondage of Pharaoh. Okay, so here they are. They're wandering through the wilderness. Moses is leading them. They're complaining. He's constantly going to the Lord. Lord, why have you given me these people to lead out? They're not listening to me. Da, 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 da. 
So Moses goes up on the mountain, but this is what happened before that. This is the scripture that God taught me a lesson in this morning. And I need you all all to listen and don't be talking to nobody. Moses led the children of Israel to the base of the mountain at Mount Sinai. Now how many of you all believe this word to be true? From the front to the back. Do you believe it to be true? Okay. Moses led the children of Israel to the base of the mountain at Mount Sinai. God said, don't let them touch this mountain. They cannot come up this mountain because I am a holy God and I will wipe them out. Now, that's the God we serve, a holy God. But when Moses brought them to this mountain, God descended upon that mountain in a dense cloud. Not only did he descend on the mountain in a dense cloud, but the mountain, it said it shook violently. Thunder and lightning was coming all over. So the, I've got cold chills all over me. The children of Israel knew God was there, okay? It was undeniable that God was there, okay? So they're at the base of the mountain. Moses goes up. So does Joshua, but Joshua doesn't go all the way up. But Moses goes up to, to be in the presence of God. And God's given him all kinds of, he gives them the Ten Commandments, gives them different, the law, how he, wants the, how he wants the tabernacle that we looked at the other night, how he wants that built. God is pouring into Moses. Moses is in the presence of the Lord. Well, while Moses is up there in the presence of the Lord, all the people are down here with Aaron, which is supposed to be Moses' helper, which is in leadership, and he's supposed to be in control of the people. Well, guess what happens? They get tired of waiting for Moses. They're like, well, Lord, I mean, he's been up there forever. I mean, like, what's happened to him? Where is he at? He's gone. We need a God that we can see and we can follow. So guess what Aaron does? Now this is where I was. What the, what's the matter with Aaron? What's the matter with that man? He goes, okay, give me all your gold earrings. Take your earrings off. Give me your earrings, all your sons and daughters earrings. Let me have all gold earrings. He took all the gold earrings and he made them a calf out of gold so that they could worship that. Okay, when I saw that, I'm, I, I'm thinking, what's the matter with that man? He just saw all of the miracles in Egypt, how God delivered those people out, and he's making them an idol to worship? I don't understand that. But this is what the Lord showed me. Well, with the help of the commentary, too. Because <laughs> I, really, I, I was really upset. I didn't, I didn't get it. But what, what was going on was Aaron, the guy that was down there with the people, he became a people pleaser. And we're going to talk about performance, and we're going to talk about worship. Because when we please people, we're performing. But when we truly look into our heart, and we become a God chaser, we worship. Does that make sense? Because on the outside of me, it might look like that I have everything together, Seth. Y'all might look at me and go, you know what, I wish I was Beth Cocker and she's just got it all together and they just got the bestest family in the whole wide world and they don't ever do anything wrong. Wrong? We don't have it all together. We walk a walk just like you walk every day. We battle every day just like you battle every day. But the difference is we either choose to run to God or we choose to do it on our own. Are you a people pleaser? Are you Aaron down at the bottom of the mountain saying, well, I'm just going to give them what they want? Or are you a God chaser? Are you a Moses man up on the mountain with the face of God? When we worship, we worship from the inside out. When we truly worship, we worship from the inside out. And what, I'm, what I want you all to do is I want you all to begin to look inside. I'm not talking about, oh, well, I, you know, I struggle with uh, pornography or, or I struggle with drugs. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about stuff on the outside that you can see. I'm talking about looking in your heart. I'm talking about letting God expose you and getting so real with yourself that you've got to lay it down in order to go on. Because that's what happened to me this morning. Because I have to lay it down. That is weak in my armor. 
And I want to always be in the will of God. So if that stands in my way, it's got to go. Matthew chapter 23, verse 27, it says, Woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. That goes along with, you know, I know there was a comment that was made. I heard from somebody. You know, I'm not really looking forward to going on this Christless walk because I know so-and-so's working it, and I know the life they live, and it ain't holy. Can I get a testimony in that? How many of you all thought that before? You know what? I'm not following them because I know the life they live outside of church, and it don't connect with what they do in church. This is whitewashed tombs. This is how we have to become real with who we are. You know, you can fake people out, but you ain't going to fake God out because he looks in the heart. And when you're truly worshiping, you know, and some people said, do I have to raise my hands to worship? If God don't tell you to raise your hands, you don't have to raise your hands because if you're truly worshiping standing there, God sees your heart. God looks at your heart. And if your heart is sincerely worshiping him, then you're worshiping him. Um, Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I know as a worship leader, I have, we battle performance. That's just something that, that always comes up. Yes, God expects us to be excellent in what we do. You're a football team, you practice. You practice to be excellent on the field so that you know what to do when something happens. You're ready to, to respond immediately. Same as a worship team. Same thing in our life. We're training. We're training for the game, y'all. We're in the game. But this is, where, this, is where our, this is our training manual. This is how we know what to do and how, how to react when things happen. Worship is definitely a heart issue. God looks at our heart. And if you hate God, he knows that. If you love him with all your heart, he knows that. Um, there's this movie, and we love this movie. Remember the Titans? How many of y'all have seen that movie? I love that movie. Like, we've watched it at least, I don't know, eight times. We just could watch it over and over and over again. But there's one thing in there, and I can't even think of the dude that says that. These two, these two guys are going at it, this, a black guy and a white guy, they're going at it. They're, they're both team leaders. And one of them said, yeah, strong side, left side. One of them says, Attitude reflect leadership. Do you remember that? Attitude reflect leadership. Who are you following? Who's your leader? Who's your daddy? <laughs> yes, there you go, Gregory. Attitude reflect leadership. You know what? I today, honest. This is honest to God. The enemy had me down till twelve o'clock today. And Ginger Ford called me on the phone, out of the blue, total God thing, and ministered to me for at least 20 to 25 minutes. That is the love of God. God, I didn't tell her to call me. But that is the love of God. That is God loving us so much that he's not going to leave us there. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. You're so sweet. This is the last thing I'm going to tell you. And this is one of the things that Ginger shared with me, which Brian has preached on this before. I want you all to receive this, okay? Listen. I want everybody listening. Sometimes, Jenna, I know that you love the Lord, you guys. Some of these girls that really seek after God, I know. And I don't know how you feel. I know how I feel. I just want to always be in his will. And I want more of him. But you know what? This is so cool. And Ginger said this to me today, and it really ministered to me. God already sees my end. <laughs> God already sees my end. It's like she was telling about, her, she taped a, a, a ball game for her and Greg one night. And she had already knew, she already knew who was going to win. 
She knew who was going to foul out. She knew all that. And Greg come home and was watching. He was like, oh, it's 10 minutes. Who's going to win? She already knew. So it's just like for God. He already knows your end. Cassie Squires, God already knows what you are. He already sees it. He knows your end from your beginning. So what we have to do is we have to walk in that, check our heart daily. Lord, what's in our heart that's not pleasing to you? God, I give it to you. Keep walking because he knows our heart and he knows what we're going to become. Does that make sense? That is the God we serve. Um, performance, worship, well, performance, not worship, but performance, is pleasing men. That's not what we're here for. We got to be God pleasers, God chasers, women and men that are seeking the face of God, not because so and so. And, I, and I'll be honest, I deal with this, guys. I deal with this. If I thought I was letting Daniel down or Greg down or Scott down or Brian or Haywood, it would kill me. It would kill me if I thought I was letting them down. But if I know what God's told me to do, I have to do that. And the same for you all. So rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Guys, keep praising him. Girls, keep praising him. Keep praising him in the bad. Keep praising him in the good. I'm so proud of you all. I'm, I don't even know you, but I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you all that got up and stood up and said, you know what? This is what God did in me this weekend. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. We praise you. So just remember, this week... As you go through, go through time with the Lord, are you being a Moses? Are you seeking the face of God? Are you a God chaser? Are you wanting to be in His will? Or are you an Aaron that just wants to please people? Greg, come on, I guess we'll do invitation. Is that a good time? One of the things that we wanted to do with you all is, um, and I guess I was kind of not knowing, I was expecting, going to do one thing, and I guess it just maybe not be the right thing. I don't know. But as we do invitation tonight, um, what we were going to do was kind of teach as we go through the song, but it might not be the right time tonight to do that. But guys, girls, whenever you are worshiping and you're singing, don't sing the words just to sing them. You need to connect with the words. We're going to sing the heart of worship. The words is, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. The heart, the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's not about me. It's not about anybody else in this room. It's all about you, Lord. And we don't know how long this worship study is going to go. I know some of you are like, oh, good Lord, we're going to do this again. And some of you are like, I want more. We're just trying to be obedient and do what God tells us to do. And when he says it's done, we're done. We're just going to follow the leading in the Holy Spirit of that. But as I want you all to stand. And as we sing, really understand what you're saying. And don't just sing the words, okay?